now then it's Stockfish and Lula Chess Zero that I've managed to get to the TCEC Season 17 Super Final. And we're going to take a look at the first decisive game. And Stockfish is playing white in this game, Lula Chess Zero is playing black. Again, the game is in the description below with all the details of what engines to use. I've actually got the game off Chess24 and analysed it through Chessbase. So I put some variations in there as well. Now the game kicked off with Stockfish playing e4 and then there was c5 and this is the book's move so it was knight to f3, e6, d4, takes takes, knight to f6, knight to c3 and then d6 and this is the end of the book moves and here Stockfish played g4. So we're into a Sicilian Scheveningen variation, the Keres attack and basically white's just going to play g5, h4 and try and harass black structure. The e6 pawn is sort of in the way of the bishop, which allows white to play this g4 move. Now typically here black can play h6, and player typically continues with h4, knight c6 and rook g1, followed by h5, takes takes, bishop g5, knight to f6 and queen d2. And basically all the only books suggest that white actually has a good edge here. And it's hard to disagree, mainly because his bishop on g5 can't be kicked away now by an h6 move. And white also has an open g file, which black has to contend with. So going back to the game, Leela now played a6. Play continued on g5 by Stockfish, hitting the knight, which jumps back to d7. And interestingly here, Stockfish played a very unusual move. It's only been seen once in my database, a3. Now typically here white plays bishop e3, black plays b5 and now white plays a3 to stop b4 and then play continues on bishop b7 h4. So it's very weird here for Stockfish to play a3 straight away but it sort of preempts the b5 idea by black. Maybe it's just sort of a waiting move to see what black does but it's a very interesting novelty. So Leela now played knight to c6 and bishop to e3. Now I guess if black played b5 here, a3 would make a lot of sense. Um, but play continued on by Leela with knight e5 with some sneaky tactics. So the g5 pawn has sort of left a hole here on the f3 square. Maybe black could exploit this. But it's not clear immediately how they can do this. But if white played maybe queen d2, black has some sneaky tricks with knight takes d4. And if queen takes d4, knight to f3, forking the king and queen. But Stockfish is too smart for that. Bishop e2 was played to cover this square. And after knight takes d4, now white can play. Queen takes d4. And Leela dropped the knight back to c6. And the queen retreats back to d2. And Leela developed with bishop to e7. And Stockfish continued with attacking h4, protecting their g5 pawn. But they probably want to actually push this pawn up even further. Leela now played b5, preparing probably to Fianchetto their bishop. Stockfish now played h5, so they have a great attack coming. And there's not really a lot of black can do. If black tries to subdue the attack with g6, then white's got an interesting variation after h takes g6, f takes. And white can just continue on with f4, and actually now has the open h file. So this doesn't look very good for black, because if play continued with queen a5, bishop d3, b4... White has a nice move, knight to d5, sacking a piece. And if black accepts this with e takes d5, then white can recapture knight d8 and play bishop takes g6. The h pawn is pinned. So after knight to f7, bishop to e4, bishop g4, and then bishop d4. White's got amazing two bishops in the centre of the board. Attacking the rook on h8. Uh, so if rook g8, queen takes b4. I trade the queens. Um, it's very easy to assess this position. I would take white all the time here. They've got the great bishops, three pawns for the piece, and they'll probably win another pawn here with rook takes h7 at some point. And basically, uh, black's position is so dire that the best move he's get given here is uh, bishop takes g5, followed by f takes g5. So giving up a bishop to win back two pawns. But even so, after this, white's still a pawn up with some great bishops. Instead of trying to do something, Leela just played queen a5 instead, and Stockfish played h6. And Leela decided to close things up instead of taking his pawn, which I think is a terrible move, because the rook will just recapture it. They played g6 instead, and Stockfish saw fit enough now to play Castle's kingside. So 
Obviously Stockfish feels that their king is absolutely safe here. And it's hard to disagree, there's not really many pieces that can attack it. Basically the position on the king's side is actually quite closed due to this pawn structure. And I guess why it's planned now is just to play f4. Leela also castled kingside, and Stockfish did play f4, preparing the move f5. Now if Leela again tries to do something with like e5 here, White can just play f5 and has a great position. Also d5 looks interesting, but still, White just wins a pawn with takes, takes b4. Queen d8, and then Knight takes d5 with a great position for White. So again after f4, Black's pretty much forced to sit back and wait which is what Leela did with queen to c7. And now Stockfish just builds up, builds up this f5 move, rook f2, rook b8, and then just double rooks on the f-file, prepares f5, bishop d7, and bishop g4. So now three more pieces by Stockfish have just been put into this f5 move, and black's still sitting back. They play rook c8 by Leela, Stockfish plays bishop h3, and queen b7 so preparing the move b4 trying to gain some activity but stockfish just plays knight to a2 to stop this a5 so Leela okay is now building up on the queen side with this b4 push but uh, after knight c3 Leela still builds up now uh, stockfish just comes up with an excellent move just plays b4 and the tactics are actually in white's favor because after a takes b4 a takes b4 if Leela continued on here with knight takes b4. White can play rook b1, hitting the knight. If the knight goes back to c6, then just knight takes b5. Queen a6, and just c4 protects the knight, and win, wins back the pawn. And white may be able to take on d6 on the next move as well at some point. So knight takes b4 isn't really possible here. And I should just also mention after this rook b1 move, d5 isn't possible because then just white just plays queen to d4, which threatens mate on g7 and also attacks this knight twice with the rook and queen. So in the actual game, Leela now continued with rook f c8. So the knight actually does a great job of stopping queen d4 for black, but now Stockfish just hits in with f5 and the attack is just starting. If black takes this off, with g takes f5 and e takes f5 and takes again. White just gets a clear advantage here with knight to d5. Again, the bishops and two rooks can take on f5 at any point. If bishop e6, then bishop takes f5, knight to e5, and then bishop to e4, with the a threat of the discovered attack to play knight to f3 check and win the queen on b7. And if queen d7, just bishop d4, rook c4, and white can play c3. And all of a sudden, White's position looks fantastic. Play continues on King H8, then Queen F4 threatens to take on E5 twice. So Black's forced to give the exchange up. And after Knight G6, moves like Queen E3 can come. Bishop D8, King H2, Rook C8, and Bishop to F5 at the end. And after, if Black still shuffles, White can get the King up. Bishop takes F5, Rook takes, Queen E6. Queen f3, and threaten to win this pawn on f7. Knight h8 just looks, looks like a desperate move by black, and you have to say white definitely has the advantage. So taking definitely isn't an option here. I looked at e5 as well, but then again white can just play f takes g6. And if bishop takes h3 here, rook takes f7 is just ridiculously strong, with moves like rook g7 coming, followed by uh, rook f7, or just g takes the pawn on h7. Ridiculously strong. And if black plays f takes g6, then queen d5 check, king h8 and rook f7 can follow. And if rook f8, white just wins with rook takes. And if bishop takes, then rook f7 is ridiculously strong, hitting this bishop on d7. And if rook takes f8, then rook takes f8 check, bishop takes and queen f7 at the end, attacking the bishop. And if queen a8, then bishop takes d7, just wins a piece for white. So after f5, once again, Leela has to just not take this pawn, and she plays knight to e5 instead, maybe trying to get a defender into the centre of the board. Stockfish continues though, f takes g6, f takes g6 was played, and now bishop to f4. So we get a sort of similar position to what we had. So in some variations, white may be able to play bishop takes e5 with a discovered attack against this bishop, or at least double black centre pawns. 
Rook f8 was played, and now queen to d4. Friend to take twice on e5. Queen c7 by Lula stops this. But now we see a similar theme that we saw in a, a previous variation. White plays knight to d5. Attacking the queen, attacking the bishop, and again threatening to take on e5 twice. So Lila captured the knight. Bishop takes d7 was played. Queen takes d7. And now the point of the move. Queen takes d5 check. And if king h8 here, bishop takes e5 can be played with check. And black can't take the bishop because then queen takes queen. So bishop f6 takes, rook takes, g takes. Queen g4 check, rook g2 and then the queen moves followed by queen d4, just a win for white. So king h8 definitely can't be played. Knight to f7 is forced. And now Stockfish is in the driving seat. You play queen d4, threatening mate on g7. And there's literally no way to stop this without playing knight to e5, which just loses. So bishop f6 is played, sacking the piece back. Queen takes f6, again threatening mate. But now knight to e5 saves the day. The queen protects the g7 square. But now it's just a matter of uh, trading everything off for Stockfish. Queen g7, queen takes g7, and h takes g7. If the king takes this off, then white can just play takes on e5 with check. Pawn takes trade the rooks and after king takes king f2 is just a winning position for white now for instance if king g7 there's king e3 if black goes for h5 here then just takes king takes and c4 just wins because after pawn takes b5 white will just run away and get a queen and in this end game if king f7 again c4 just wins with takes king d2 and black's got a problem if the black king goes this way then the white king will just come up and take this pawn off and if they try h5 again, then just g takes h6, king g8, and b5 just wins because white's going to get a queen on either side of the board. So going back to the game, rook f e8 was played rather than king takes g7, but even so, Stockfish just trades on e5. Pawn takes on e5, and after rook f8, we frankly get a similar position. Just rook takes, rook takes, rook takes, pawn takes, and king takes. And we're into an identical position pretty much. King f1 was played. King f7, king e2, king f8, and then c4, pawn takes, king to d2, and Lila's got a decision to make. Basically, she loses no matter what she does. If king e7 here, king c3 can be played, king d7, king takes, and it's just an easy one end game. Basically, white's going to shove the pawn all the way up the board, and even if it's uh, a drawn position, the king can always come back and take this pawn off. And in this variation, king c6, the pawn can just run up the board. In the actual game though, Lila played king to g7, b5 was played, and eventually white just got a queen. Here, h6 takes, king f7, and to rub it in, Stockfish got another queen. And queen takes e5, king d7, and here actually Lila finally gave up and resigned the game. And Stockfish got first blood in the TCEC 17 Super Final. So an amazing result, and a really nice game played by Stockfish. And to be honest, Lila never really stood a chance uh, in this game. But anyway, thanks for watching my video. I hope to bring you more of these TCEC games very soon. Please do drop a like, comment, or subscribe if you enjoyed the video or you haven't already. And I hope you all are staying safe at home and playing some great online chess at the moment. Anyway, I hope to see you tomorrow with another video, and stay safe at home, everyone.